In the painting that we're about to create, I'm going to paint the beautiful magnolia flower. This painting is from a photograph that I took from our magnolia tree that blossoms every spring, and it's a very beautiful flower. The flower is predominantly whitish in tone, but it modulates to a beautiful maroon color towards its base. And what I particularly like is the contrast between the maroonish color and the complementary color of the greens, the leaves. It's very beautiful. Also, when you look closely at the magnolia flower, you'll see hints of cerulean blue and other faint indications of red. Very subtle throughout the white part of the petals. To develop the painting, we're going to mask out this area over here before we actually paint in the background. The painting will not only incorporate lessons of how to apply flat washes to achieve beautifully modulated tones, but it will also include a demo on how to mask out an area. We're ready to start painting. The drawing is complete and ready for the paint. My subject matter is easily accessible on my tablet. My palettes have paint in them. My bins with color, additional color, are prepared. I have clean water over here. My brushes, a sponge. Time to start painting. To begin this magnolia painting, I'm going to start painting this leaf right over here. And the first thing that I need to do is wet it with water, dampen it. It's not going to be soaking wet, as you will see. Then I'm going to lay in my light wash of the foundation color. There we go. A little bit of this color right over here. And that same wash can be applied to many of the other petals. So let's begin. Watch what I do and then do what I do. First step is to dampen the petal area with clean water. Now that's quinacridone magenta and I, I want to use a very light wash of that. Flowing it in to the entire petal area. I'm going to darken it a bit down here. I also notice that it mingles with a cerulean blue in this area. So I'm going to take a little of my cerulean blue, thin it down, and flow it in. I consider this prime in the paper. If you don't dampen the paper, and you apply the paint directly, the paint might suck into the fiber of the paper and you're going to wind up with brush strokes. So, I dampen the paper in the area that I'm going to apply the paint first. Then I flow in my color. It gets a little darker here and here. To achieve that darkness, I'm going to go to my cobalt blue. And I'll work in a little bit of cobalt blue into that area. And also down here. In my photo, I see a highlight here. So what I'm going to do to do that is clean up my brush and lift out an area just like that. Eventually, when it's dry, the second layer, I'll apply a shadow to that area so it looks like it actually raises up a bit. Beautiful flower. I'm particularly fond of these white or whitish magnolia flowers because of the subtleties that the white petals embody. 
Very beautiful. I'm going to splatter this area a little bit. I just dampened my fan brush with some clean water, and I'm going to use it to splatter the surface a bit. That'll cause the paint to spread in a very natural looking way. And go to my magenta, flow it in. The petal actually lightens as it goes that way, so I just dipped my brush in clean water. Now I'm going to suck out some of that pigment and drag it over. Nice. And I see overtones of blue. Once again, I like to introduce them, like you saw me do in all of the petals. Notice. I'm not painting petals that touch one another. I'm painting petals that are separated by areas of different shapes. And in order to paint an area, what I do is I dampen it with water. I flow my color. I work in an additional color that I see indicated in the photo. And now I'm going to let this dry, these areas dry. This is my first application. On top of this application, once it's completely dry, I'll be able to darken areas and work in shadows and other little details that I see in my photo. But the thing to keep in mind is I'm not painting adjacent petals. Why am I not doing that? Because I want the watercolor to dry, and I want to get those beautifully distinct edge lines that watercolor creates. Once this is completely dry, then I could paint in the petals located in between. Let's use the example of the Rubrum Lily watercolor painting that I did, and it's also featured in a video. I use the same exact approach. In other words, I might have painted this petal, this petal, and let them dry completely before I painted in petals that were touching these. In doing this, you're able to get these nice distinctions between petals. See how this remains its own little entity of a form? Totally separate from this. That's what I like in watercolor. Quidacridone, magenta. Okay, I see a little blue in there, so we're going to go back to our cobalt blue. Hmm, possibly too much. But no big deal. I do want to bring it up there. But what do I mean by no big deal? Well, all I really have to do is lift it out. Yep, that's what I want. Good. And there's a fairly strong highlight right there, right down the middle of the petal. I'm going to try to indicate that by lifting a little of that paint out. The beauty of this flower is its subtlety, and ultimately that's what I want to capture in the watercolor. Bring out a little of that blue. I'm going to continue to lay in petals. My brush had a little bit of the residual blue on it, but it's okay because this petal looks like it's in a shadow area and the blue is only going to help that. Okay, leave it alone. I'm dampening the section that needs to be painted. And first I'm going to apply a wash of cerulean blue.
a little bit of blue. Now I went to my water, and I'm moving it around with just plain water. I didn't want the blue to be too heavy. A little there. A little there at the tip of the flower. I can see in my photograph. It deepens right in that area. So we'll, we'll apply some magenta there. Good. We'll leave it alone. Once again, I'm going to begin with a light wash of cerulean. Something that you should be aware of, watercolor will always dry a shade or two lighter than with what was actually applied. I don't hesitate to move my painting around to make it easier to get out areas. I turn my painting any which way I need to, to make it convenient to get at the sections I need to paint. I'm going to work in with my cerulean. And then my magenta. As I study the petal, the cerulean blue seems to be an important undercolor to apply. I'm seeing it throughout. And then I add the magenta on top of it. We're almost complete with the light colored petals but I see an area over here that should be painted before I begin to add the darker areas. Dampen the very lightest area of the petal. The petal kind of overlaps and folds in upon itself in this area and that's ultimately what I'm going to want to capture. Blow in my cerulean blue where I want it to go. I think I mentioned before, all the petals and beautiful magnolia, this particular magnolia that actually grows on my front lawn, all the white petals do have a very subtle hint of blue. Grab onto a little of that magenta and work it in. I don't play around with it too much. After I flow my washes, I leave them alone. I let them do their own thing. I have confidence that the paint knows what to do. Now that these petals are completely dry, I'm going to start to establish some of the modulations in tone that I see in the surface. Now, for example, this one is slightly in the shade over here. How do I do that? Well, first thing I do is dampen the area that I want the shadow to gradually merge into. In other words, I want the shadow to merge from the shadow area to a lighter area, but I want it to be very gradual. I'd like to use a little cobalt blue to establish that shadow. Now I'll wash in that area, and I want the cobalt blue where it comes in contact with the damp paper to bleed really nice. So I have a gradual transition from light to dark. I very often use cobalt blue to establish shadow areas. As the petal curves slightly, there's a little darkening in this area, so I think I could take that cobalt blue and add it there. I also see a similar kind of transition from shadow to light in this area, and this actually almost works, but I would like to carry it a little further, so I'm going to dampen 
where I see the primary transition take place. Having done that, I'm going into my blue that I mixed with water to thin it down. And I'm going to apply a shadow. Leave it alone. Actually, in the photo, I'm looking at it. I see a little bit of a shadow area there, too. So why not? Why not take a little blue and just drop it right in? In this area, I think I, I had mentioned before, there's a sort of like a shade that falls right in here. I'm going to paint wet into damp paper and let that paint bleed on its own naturally. So here we go. I want to create the feel that we have a shade. The flower lifts up a little in that area, the petal that is lifts up, and then we modulate back to our shade. I'd like to tone it down to reinforce the shadow as it goes here. What will I do? I'm going to use neutral tint this time. Wet in a little neutral tint. I'll wash it in. Let's begin to establish some of the darker areas. Interestingly enough, I'm looking at the photo and the underside of this petal indicates a very subtle hint of green, although the primary color is magenta. I'm going to dampen it. This green on my palette happens to be a combination of cobalt blue and aurelian yellow. I'm going to apply that to the dampened paper just down there. I realize my palette looks like a mess, but these colors are useful. And their accidental blendings provide me with wonderful little color combinations that I can use for my paintings. Okay. See, I never said I wanted it to be green. I simply said I see accents of green undertones. And I want to try to capture that. Actually, I should go a little darker. Remember what I said. Your watercolor will dry lighter than the actual paint application. I'd like to tackle this large petal area over here. This has a very strong feeling of blue, so I'm going to rely on my cerulean to start off with and wash it in and carry it through. Then I go to my magenta and I apply it strongly to the bottom of the petal. Clean my brush in clean water, and I work back into that color, diluting it a bit with the clean water, and work it in such a way that it's going to carry up in a very subtle way. The whole area is wet. I see the petal over here at the base darken significantly. Can you see that in the photo? So what I would like to do to achieve that, while this area is still wet, mix a little of my cobalt blue, and I happen to have some right here, and apply it to the wet paint and let it bleed. I'm going to also, at this point, go into a little of my neutral tint. I like that color. And I'll get a little down here. I'm even seeing in the photo, I wish I could pull it up and show you, a little hint of brown matter. Using a very fine brush, 
I'm going to work in some of that brown matter right over here. Yeah, that's nice. I'm happy with that. Leave it alone. Let it dry. The flower becomes alive once you start applying contrasts of color. Now I'm washing in magenta. I think what I would like to do is with a clean brush, just pull a little of that color over. A touch of cerulean. This is a very light area of the petal, and it's mostly a highlight of blue, so I'm going to dampen it. And just work in a little of that cerulean and move it around. That line work is a little too dark for me. I dampened it. Now I'll flow in a cerulean blue wash. I'm going to flow a little extra water in now, push the blue towards the edge, towards the dry area. I believe I've said this before, but it's time to repeat. When you dampen an area of watercolor paper to apply paint, and the rest is dry, the watercolor will only flow within the dampened area. It will not flow into the dry areas of the paper as long as you're using good quality paper. This area over here is almost all white with a little bit of a blue tint. It curves towards the edge and grays a bit. So, what shall I do? Wet a little of that cerulean blue. Add it here to establish that blue-white tonality that seems to dominate throughout the entire magnolia. Now I will dampen some neutral tint and with my fine brush lay it in towards the edge. A little too dark. So what can I do? While it's wet, I'll paint back into it and lift it out. Damp brush is very effective in removing paint. So what happens is I clean my brush. I work in a little water back into the area and then squeeze it out with my finger, clean it. That's good. I'm continuing to work around the entire watercolor. An interesting little area over here that we need to address right now. Let's take a look at the photo. Here's what's happening. See how the petal curves into the shade? I'll show you how to do that. What I do is I dampen the surrounding area and then I apply my darker color. Work it into the dampened area so 
instead of getting an edge line as it dries, I get a gentle bleed. I'm dampening the paper where it'll bleed up. Being careful not to wet the area of the line itself because I want to maintain a sharp line right over here. Go to my magenta color and work it in. What I will do is lift a little of the pigment out. Let's work in one of those very subtle veins. Dampen the entire area. I'm using a zero brush for the purpose of achieving the lines. I want very soft focus and blurry lines. This is a rather dramatic one over here. My paper is adequately dry. What does that mean? It means I can dampen this area and not worry about messing up this. Pay in very close attention to where that curving line starts. And ends. There we go. I'm going to darken it a little bit down here. Shadowy area right over here. So what do I do? I'm wetting the petal where I want the shadow to fade. Get some cobalt blue on my brush and work it in. I'm lifting out a little paint to soften that area. And this here works its way into a shadow. I'll do the same thing. I'm going to want the shadow to bleed out as it moves up the petal. Thank you. 